Congratulations on your purchase of Sidesticks. I'm Kareth, co-founder of Sidesticks Ventures, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble your Sidesticks. So the first thing you want to do is open the box. So there's a letter of introduction and some instructions. So the first thing that you'll see is the tools that are required for assembling Sidesticks. The Sidesticks tool and the Allen key. Now we have the forearm assembly, and there's a left hand and a right hand, and then the lower tube assemblies. Okay, to assemble your side sticks, you'll take the lower tube assembly and you'll need to slacken off the screw. And then you take the forearm assembly and you slide it into the lower tube assembly. And then you take an Allen key and you'll tighten it up. Now the way to tighten it is to just tighten it till it's not slack anymore and then just give it about an eighth turn. So you're giving it some force the actual value is 9 newton meters if you have a torque wrench, but other than that, about an eighth of a turn and just a good cinch is all it needs. The grip can be adjusted to maximize the comfort, so in order to do that, you need to remove the neoprene cover if you're using it. And then using the Allen key, undo the screw on the grip. Just a few turns and then rotate the grip to the desired angle. What you're trying to achieve is a neutral position for your wrist so that you're not straining it. So when you have it in a comfortable position, then just tighten up the screw again. Nice and snug. And you can either use the grip with or without the neoprene cover. It's up to you. There are two areas where the side sticks boundless can be adjusted for height. One is at the bottom of the lower tube, and then the other is just underneath the shock absorber. Typically, you'd adjust it at the bottom of the lower tube, so that's what I'll show first. You slacken the, uh, the Allen screw, and then you just change the length, either in or out, to suit your height. The maximum distance you can extend it is to the last score line, so there has to be one inch buried inside the lower tube. So that's an important thing to remember. So that would be the maximum adjustment for this particular boundless. And it can be also pushed all the way in with no extension. Once you've achieved the length that's comfortable for you, you need to tighten up the Allen screw. There's also adjustment available at the top of the boundless. Again, by slackening the, the screw, you can slide out the shock absorber assembly. And again, you'll notice there's a one inch at the end of the shock absorber that has no score line. So you can only extend it to the last score line. So that would be the maximum extent of the extension. The size six shock absorber preload can be adjusted by winding the plug further into the body of the shock absorber. This is usually done by taking the Allen key and putting it into the slot and winding the plug in. Now, if you wind it in just a couple of turns, you'll notice a lot more resistance in the shock absorber. If you wind it in until it stops turning, what will actually happen is that the shock absorber will stop moving altogether. So you don't want to wind it in too far or you'll lose the shock action. The other thing is that you don't want to have it too far out because if you wind it further out than the threads, and I'll just show that right here, then the shock absorber will become loose and you'll notice a clicking noise. So this is the place to start and you can increase the stiffness by winding it in or make it slightly softer by winding it out. If for any reason the Allen key slips inside this plug, you have the option of using a wrench on these flats and adjusting it in that way.